Hello, I'm Kara Nielsen, Director of Food and Drink at WGSN, and it's my pleasure to be here today to share some key trends around frozen food. WGSN is one of the globe's top trend forecasters, and the Food and Drink platform has been growing over the last year and a half, and we're very excited to be able to share these trends with you today. I'm going to be taking questions at the end of this presentation, so feel free to uh, send them in uh, while we are presenting. And then if you're watching this presentation at your own leisure another time, you can still send in questions and contact me via the FHA Match platform. So that is a great way to reach out, uh, give your feedback, ask questions, and get more information. We are also going to be able to give you an opportunity to download WGSN's Future Consumer 2023 white paper. You'll see that we have a QR code on the second slide as well as at the end of the presentation. There'll also be a link on the platform and you'll be able to download that and read more about this very fascinating white paper that outlines the future consumer that you'll need to know for 2023. So I'm going to get started here and share my screen so we can dive into key trends in frozen food. As you can see here, and as you probably experienced yourself over the last year with the COVID-19 pandemic, our shopping behaviors changed, our eating behaviors changed, being in lockdown really affected people and shoppers and retailers, everybody across the board. And what we saw was a huge uptick in interest and development around frozen food. So we're going to walk through these trends today. First, I want to tell you about WGSN Food and Drink. We're part of WGSN, and we are a platform that offers trend content in a variety of ways that's all designed to help inspire new product development, to inform category management, to help retail buyers, and really help people understand what's happening now that's going to lead to changes in the future that you need to know. And you can see here's that QR code that I mentioned if you'd like to download our copy of our Future Consumer 2023. The food and drink platform is something that is developed and designed and written by food professionals. This really makes it an exceptional tool because we really understand food and drink and how the industry works. We have a variety of content that spans everything from forecasts that are one, two, three, and five years out. We look at the future food 10 years out, but we're also looking at what's happening right now with market analysis, trade show reviews, and a daily updated feed. We really focus on offering actionable insights based on these trends and putting them in context so that you can use them to grow your business. So everything we do at WGSN starts with the consumers. So to get a sense of the consumer drivers behind frozen food trends, I wanna introduce you to our food and drink personas for 2023. This is part of our work uh, that works across our different industry areas. We have an insight division that works with all of our content leaders to create a set of macro forecasts. And it's these macro forecasts that take into consideration the major forces that are changing people, that are changing society, new things breaking through in technology, public policy shifts and changes, what's really going on in industry and creativity. And those macro trends then are translated into industry specific applications. And that's what we do on the food and drink site. Here you can see a list of the series of our forecasts, starting with the future drivers and future innovations, and then leading to the future consumers. This suite of reports are basically industry agnostic. And then what we do is take each of them and articulate what that means for our different industry coverages. So setting the stage for frozen food trends, I want to take a look at one of our future innovations for 2023, which is the great indoors. And if you're like me, you have probably spent more time indoors than you ever anticipated. 
But what we see happening in the future is that everything that has been happening uh, to people, whether they're suffering from illnesses, dealing with the pandemic, uh, job loss, being affected by economic uncertainty, or even the uh, political unrest that is happening and continues to happen in many parts of the world, we're really turning indoors and creating a sanctuary of our homes. And we see that the development of the home as sanctuary will continue. And we're going to have entire ecosystems of needs, activities, and products that revolve around the great indoors. What's driving that is this really very primal need for safety and security. So because of all this uncertainty and these changes, consumers, people are really turning in looking for where they can be safe, how they can feel secure. And this is only gonna be amplified in the years to come because as you've noticed, things aren't quite getting back to normal yet. So consumers are gonna be focusing on protection, mitigating risk and creating safe spaces. So it's, it's within this context that we see new eating behaviors. And one of those eating behaviors include frozen food. Um, I mentioned that we take five big ideas from these forecasts and work out what they mean for the food and drink industry. And one of them that's very connected to um, frozen food is embracing frugality. We know that COVID-19 demonstrated how fragile the food system is, and it's really instilled a need for being economical and value conscious around food, as well as consumers looking for more self-sufficiency. They don't wanna to have to rely on services or needing to go to the store or outside forces for their well-being. So by 2023, consumers are gonna be more mindful about sustainability and self-reliance as well as their health and well-being. And they're gonna be making frugal consumption a more mainstream value. Uh, and this includes affordable, convenient frozen food. And you can see here, some of these images are showing new food products as well as a, a new cookbook that came out recently in the United States. It's always freezer season. This is definitely responding to a need that consumers have for learning how to manage their food, cook food and save it for the future in a self-sufficient way that's also quite affordable and economical. So here are the four consumer values that we see growing in the food and drink industry for 2023. And we're mostly going to focus on two of these, the everyday optimizer and the sensory seeker. Now, if you think about it, the way this works is that these are value sets that are already growing and we're seeing their roots and we're going to see them grow even further in the future. So by 2023, these will be more mainstream groups and more people will be looking and sharing these value sets. So this is a way of getting ready for the future now. The everyday optimizer is a skilled multitasker with self-sufficiency, frugality, and convenience really top of mind. But they do have an open uh, mind when it comes to tech tools that help make their lives easier and more self-sufficient. And that could be things like using apps or subscription services to get their food, have things being automatically renewed, and come to the house without ever having to think about it. Our second persona is the sensory seeker. This is typically perhaps a younger consumer that's very interested in exploring what's new uh, with a very open mind. They are driven by discovery. They're looking for the experimental and new food and drink experiences and also trying to understand the world through those experiences. So keep those in mind as we take a tour of the frozen food trends that are really starting to grow and pop and that are gonna be influencing product development. First of all, let's set the stage again for how big this surge was in frozen food shopping in the last year. And this was a global affair. Everyone was buying frozen food and they continue to because what they've discovered is how convenient, affordable and eco-conscious frozen food can be. We saw that Asia Pacific was 40% of the global food market that is the biggest of any market. North America comes after with 30%. So this is obviously a very important category for the Asian Pacific market. In 2020, the frozen food sales grew more than any other category in Asia, especially in Hong Kong, where 58% of the population bought frozen food more often. Uh, in Singapore, that was about 40% of growth. And in Australia, 29%, which is the global average of people that are really focusing in regularly buying frozen food. 
In the US and the UK, frozen food sales were up. And what we really saw was driving that was stocking up, uh, fear of running out of food, trying to reduce food waste uh, by, you know, instead of buying fresh vegetables and having them spoil before you can use them, frozen vegetables stay fresh longer in your freezer. We also know that more dietary lifestyles are being accommodated from the freezer, and that includes foods that appeal to Gen Z that are a very plant-based, protein-minded group. But we also know the freezer is home to many uh, indulgent foods and comfort foods, nostalgic items, even thinking of frozen waffles or ice creams or frozen dumplings. These are all things regularly found in the freezer that really saw an increase during the pandemic. So our first trend is thinking about dietary convenience and how many products are finding their way into the freezer that are catering to different dietary lifestyles. We've seen a huge rise in plant-based protein, uh, whether it's morning eggs or uh, meat patties or even uh, dairy-free pizzas, um, gluten-free pizzas and other kind of no-grain options, as well as a plethora of non-dairy frozen desserts. We see that a lot of indie brands are heading right for the freezer um, and they're joined by innovative tech companies that are also showing off some of their breakthrough technology like Eat Just and its egg alternative, which is one of the biggest frozen foods that got sold uh, last year in the United States. And as I said, Gen Z is very open to shopping from the freezer. Uh, this is a generation that doesn't have any hangups about this and that is interested in having um, their needs met and finding whether it's, you know, new types of products or global dishes made with plant-based protein, this is something that works for them. A handful of brands that are really notable here, one is Good Milk. This is from Los Angeles and it's a plant milk concentrate. And this is something we're tracking called waterless plant milks, where we're now seeing plant milks remove the water uh, that's something consumers can add at home to decrease packaging size, reduce shipping weight, and be one more way of helping the environment. But we're also seeing in Asia, uh, in Singapore, Zyro offers Next Guidon from Tokyo. This is a kind of beef alternative made from soy protein, and it's something that can be easily heated and served over rice. And this is quite an exclusive offer of having this product coming from Japan. We also uh, noticed that Tyson Food is creating a new manufacturing plant in Malaysia to produce um, First Pride, its new brand of plant-based protein items that are gonna be found in the freezer that are at an affordable price point and all certified halal. And then in Hong Kong, uh, coming from Hong Kong is the Omni Meat Company has re released a new line of fish alternatives um, using some of its different formulations to expand the offerings when it comes to seafood that's made from plants. Our next trend is around family fare that really meets a comfort need as well as fits in family budgets. We know that family shoppers have really turned to the freezer to stock up in the last year and it's worked out for them. So this behavior may change to a degree, but it's still something that consumers are going to return to. So there is an opportunity to really address that need to stock up and to also have food that works for the whole family. Um, in 2020, comfort food and new family fare was introduced and did really well. But we also saw the rise of new direct-to-consumer companies that are offering like convenient frozen meals that are delivered to home. One of them in the United States is Tiller and & Hatch. And this delivery company sends meals that you choose and you cook them in an Instant Pot or electric pressure cooker. So these are meals that cook in a very short amount of time that come already prepared and you just pop them in your pressure cooker and kind of feels like you made your own meal. Uh, Trader Joe's, which is a US grocery store chain where everything is private label or it's its own label, um, also has a really great program of having seasonal offerings. So last autumn, it introduced a butternut squash mac and cheese. This was a frozen item. You can see from the packaging here, it really feels like autumn. It has a leaf uh, right on there. And um, one of the things that really generates a lot of excitement is that these are limited time offerings that don't last forever. So it really gets people to go shop, buy these, stock up, enjoy them, and then hope they come back next year. So that's a great technique for really driving traffic. It's that limited time offer that's a very seasonal item, uh, but probably isn't relevant at all times of the year. 
We also see, especially when it comes to family, an interest in more fresh and healthful fare that's coming from the freezer. Now, this has been a real traditional item in the freezer. We've seen the frozen vegetables and the frozen fruit. And what we're also seeing, though, is that consumers are more and more comfortable buying those items. They're learning that this food Fruit, for example, was picked fresh and frozen very quickly and very carefully so that many of the nutrients, the bright color, and the taste really remains. And this has also really led to more styles and more types of vegetables and fruits, including those that are value added with extra seasonings or flavors. What we're seeing here, Woolworths in Australia features an Aussie ground frozen mango. And you can see from the package that it very clearly articulates uh, with the panel on the front of pack, as well as the title, that these are Australian grown mangoes, which really resonates with folks who are looking to buy local and really support their local farmers and want to know where their food comes from. Bird's Eye has veggie spirals that are another real convenience product that's also very healthful. These are seasoned veggie spirals um, or zoodles, some people call them, that uh, also allow anyone at home to make a really quick and healthy meal however they want to doctor up those noodles. And in the United States and Texas, Tommy's Superfood sells frozen vegetables that already have, um, they're all prepared, ready to go with flavoring like a Texas barbecue seasoning. And one of this company's goal is to help reduce food waste by making sure that the vegetables that people have can stay safe in the freezer and not go bad. So this is a very environmentally conscious approach to thinking about the benefits of frozen food. What we also see, and this I think is one of the most exciting elements, is the elevated frozen fare. So many new brands and new items are coming into the freezer that really feel like they could have come from a restaurant or something that you, you know, might have spent a lot of time cooking. This is really going to appeal to all kinds of diners, any generation that's looking for a meal that really feels like it's not just, you know, a frozen TV dinner from, you know, years gone by or something kind of sad and that you, you know, found in the back of the freezer. But this is food to really get excited about. And what we're seeing um, in various parts of the world are techniques like sous vide cooking that then is frozen and sold to consumers so that they can prepare a meal that is really truly prepared just as it is in many restaurants. Um, you can see here the meals in minutes coming from Malaysia, uh, beautiful packaging. This is a sort of more upscale take on meals where the meal is all in the bag and you dip it in boiling water. And then you, you have a fresh cooked meal that looks like something you might've gotten in a restaurant. Uh, the same applies to the distal uh, Florentine turkey meatloaf. Distal Farms is a turkey grower here in Northern California, which is where I'm based. And it sells turkeys at turkey time at the end of the year, but it also is now making value added products like this Florentine turkey meatloaf, which is definitely an upgrade from what many Americans think of as an everyday meatloaf. And it's exciting to see nice looking packaging um, really comes through that this is a premium product. We're also seeing um, companies like Cadence Kitchen in the United States that's using liquid nitrogen to freeze its meals to avoid needing any kind of preservatives. And this enables it to sell, again, restaurant quality fresh cooked meals in the freezer section. Yutaka from Japan is trying to import to the United States a vegan rice kit with, as you can see, aromatic shiitake, shimiji, and namiko mushrooms. So this is really something a little bit different and special. It's a meal kit that's sold frozen. So you also have the opportunity to really engage and have almost feel like you're cooking dinner and really making something fresh, but using the freezer to deliver the ingredients for that meal. Finally, you can see in Canada, President's Choice, which is a private label brand of Loblaws, Canada's largest grocery chain, uh, came out with a summer line of all kinds of summer special food, including some frozen um, meals that were, for example, the one pictured here is chicken in a yuzu sauce. Uh, they also have a lot of you know, fresh, exciting foods that really feel like something that might've come off the grill. Flipping to the beginning part of the day, I mentioned earlier that Eat Just's folded egg, which is made from mung beans, so this is a plant-based egg, 
was one of the top selling frozen foods in the United States last year. Um, and you can see that US frozen breakfast sales grew from 405 million in 2019 to 508 million in 2020. That is a significant growth. And that really came from people being stuck at home, working from home, not commuting, not able to pick up a breakfast burrito or some kind of egg sandwich or even their cup of coffee. And so this also was something that changed consumers' relationship with their freezer and gave brands an opportunity to innovate and offer new products for the freezer that still brought some of the variety that you might find in a restaurant. So some of the standout products, um, we did a report on this and you can see these are all from the United States, but they are representative of items that you could imagine coming from the freezer in many different regions. Here you have the Eat Just products. Uh, you can see the folded egg here. The company now came out with sous vide egg bites, uh, similar to the ones that Starbucks sells in the United States, which are a gluten-free little egg bite that they heat up for you to order. Um, these egg bites are now, they're like mini egg souffles or omelets are popular and found in a lot of different places and now just has an egg free version. We also see Kind, the maker of the Kind bars, uh, came out with a frozen smoothie bowl. This is a plant-based bowl that is made with like fruit and nut butter and is something you can just pop out from the freezer. In that same token, Blendtopia is a smoothie, a superfood smoothie kit with a keto formulation. So again, these are convenient offerings that help people then, you know, pop that out, throw it in the blender, add a plant milk, and you're ready to go with a smoothie. Um, as we mentioned, another plant-based items, Ozo came out with a plant-based breakfast sausage. This again goes great with the breakfast eggs that um, you might be having that come from Just, but it also shows how the plant-based meat area is really expanding beyond just veggie burgers and hamburger alternatives into a different kinds of protein for every occasion across the day. Finally, these waffles in the bottom, the evergreen waffles came from an entrepreneur who after she had children really wanted to have a better waffle from the freezer that was made um, gluten-free, was made with clean label ingredients. She also included different vegetables like zucchini or sweet potato inside the waffle. And it really is a standout product that we think is going to influence some of the formulations we're seeing from the many frozen waffles that one can find in the United States. But this gives an idea of you know, how whatever a region's breakfast items are, there is an opportunity to offer those from the, from the freezer section. Uh, we also wanted to point out how there are new sources for frozen food. Again, it's not just either indie startups or some of the mainstays in the frozen category, but restaurants really got into the frozen food business when they weren't able to serve their customers in their own locations. And so many of them, including a dim sum restaurant from Singapore and a pizza space from London, found ways to package their food, whether it was you know dim sum bao or noodles um, or a frozen pizza, and be able to sell that in a store or even direct to consumers so that they're able to get that exact same food they would be getting in the restaurant but have it at home. And we also saw the rise of some new direct to consumer companies, as we mentioned with Tiller and Hatch earlier, Ramen District is a company that works with different ramen restaurants and gets them to freeze their ramen option and then puts them together and sends them to consumers at home. So consumers can try ramens from different restaurants, which I think is a fantastic idea. We also see the very popular uh, breakfast and lunch chain Prêt à Manger, which is popular in both the United States but comes from the UK, and um, they started by pivoting and selling coffee in new places when um, people weren't able to come into their shops, and they also now are selling their croissants frozen from the freezer. And you can just see any regular customer from Prêt à Manger will be delighted to find their perhaps favorite croissant. Um, and have a little bit of a cafe experience at home when they're still missing that opportunity themselves. Finally, our last trend is the indulgent one. Um, how many people enjoyed all the new products that are coming from the freezer that fit a more indulgent space? And I picked a set of sweets uh, to show some of the new offerings that we're seeing. I mentioned earlier that um, 
non-dairy frozen ice creams and frozen desserts and novelties have grown tremendously uh, around the world, and especially in the United States where we now have coconut milk, oat milk, rice, rice milk, all kinds of milks um, available in pints as well as novelties like this Must Love Oats, which is a new product in the United States. It's an oat milk ice cream bar. We're also seeing um, a bakery in New York City, Levant Bakery, which has been noted as having the biggest and best chocolate chip cookie in New York for a number of years now, has found a way of freezing those cookies and now selling them in certain grocery stores so that you anywhere in the country where you can get these can now have this little taste of New York. Um, I had to include this picture of a burnt bass cheesecake from the Shenxiang frozen retailer store. We were very excited to include this in a frozen fruit report last year and spent a lot of time talking about bass cheesecakes. And we know that these types of viral trends that you know pick up and people get excited about them from Instagram or from making them at home, many of them also work well in the freezer and they really show how if you are a food maker and you wanna hop on one of these trends, you know, there is an opportunity to you know, quickly try to get that into the freezer case or sell it frozen to consumers who are getting more and more used to getting food delivered in various states of you know, being frozen or refrigerated. So real opportunity there. And for my final product example, I want to tell you about Brave Robot. Uh, this is an ice cream brand in the United States. It's a partnership with Perfect Day. Perfect Day is a startup company here in the Bay Area that is creating dairy protein from microbial fermentation. So it's real dairy protein, but no animals were involved. And this is just the start of these types of ingredients that are going past a plant-based alternative to actually, you know, companies that are now um, using fermentation technology to create the proteins and ingredients from animals, but not coming from animals. Um, I have eaten this product and it's very delicious. It obviously tastes more like real ice cream than anything I've ever tasted from a plant. Uh, and we will see how this grows. Um, there are new food tech uh, companies around the world that are working on not only um, dairy, but all kinds of um, meat and fish alternatives and chicken that are all coming from various kinds of food technology, but some of it is already in the marketplace and look for it to come in a bigger way very soon. So to wrap up here, a handful of key takeaways when we think about those frozen food trends. First of all, communicate the freshness and safety. We started off talking about safety and security and the great indoors and that home sanctuary. And this really extends into the consumer mindset of wanting to feel that the food that they're buying is safe for their family, that it won't spoil and that they can prepare it safely. So I also encourage any food maker out there to really communicate how your food should be made from the freezer so that people feel comfortable that they're not thawing it or defrosting it when they shouldn't and can cook it safely. Include family and budget friendly offerings. We know that families are very much on a budget, but also families can be demanding. So what are the items that really work for a whole family? Um, will family friendly fare need to cater to different diets? So will plant-based be the way to go to please everybody in the family? And then also keep the budget in mind. There are many grocery retailers that focus on frozen food that are at a very bud great budget level. And those will continue to be real lifesavers for many consumers but they're still looking for interesting and exciting options that can fit into that space. Don't be afraid to expand flavors uh, from across the globe. The sensory seekers out there are looking for new things to experience and you know, they could be ready for things to kind of cycle through on a seasonal basis, to come from different parts of the world or to even be something that they're maybe unfamiliar with that they want to try. So communication, photographs on pack, information about what a dish might be will also really help with trial. And finally, focus on well-being and dietary options. We continue to see the plant-based and flexitarian diet growing. So we know that vegan and vegetarian options really are gonna be in demand, but there's also an interest in gluten and grain-free items, in the United States, the keto diet is growing. So most of the sugar is removed and sweeteners are used instead. So keep an eye and think about what in your portfolio could have sort of a dietary makeover, or is there an opportunity to add an option or a skew that's gonna to cater to that? 
or even create a sub brand. And for retailers, be sure you're stocking a little something for everybody because people, especially young people, are looking to the freezer to really support their dietary needs and their health and well being. With that, I'm going to conclude our presentation from WGSN talking about frozen food trends. As mentioned, if you have a question, please pop that in. Uh, we'll be answering questions for you in just a moment uh, when we present this live. And then if you're watching this at a later date, you can also send your questions in through the platform and reach out to me and we will answer your questions. Finally, you can see the QR code if you're interested in scanning that to get a copy of our future consumer 2023 white paper from WGSN. It's really been my pleasure to share these trends with you. And I hope the next time you go to the store, you look in the freezer with the new eyes and new appetite. Thank you very much.